Spain certainly is very resistant. You can move on to the um, discussions uh, that I've been having at national level uh, about a place called Somaliland, uh, which wants the right to secede from Somalia. Uh, actually has a very good case because Somaliland was an independent country for a few days before it voluntarily entered into a union with Somalia. But the African Union is adamantly against any change to what it sees as post-colonial boundaries because there are many African states which have within it uh, parts of their territories that would like a chance to leave the host country. And therefore all those member states in the United Nations which have those problems are not going to want to set precedents. Um, one of the very few uh, occasions, uh, and we still have uh, problems about uh, recognition from some countries, where progress was made about a succession was Kosovo, um, which has actually in the end uh, been allowed to separate from Serbia. Um, you know, though we, at least we had the, the situation there where Yugoslavia as was was breaking up anyway, so you had a situation which wasn't the change uh, of a state that had existed since 1945. Uh, it, it was a breakup of a, a effectively a new state that had been created following the dismantling of Yugoslavia. So all, these are issues around which are important because they, they're all about how you get international support and recognition. And so you'll get, therefore, uh, nods in, uh, in the direction of, um, well, the problems in Kashmir, we understand the issues of human rights, uh, we, we understand the problems of the Kashmiri people. Will you therefore support... Um, the uh, United Nations saying to India, you must have read it. Well, we're not quite so sure about that. Uh, and countries begin to think about the consequences of where that could lead uh, in their own backyard. And that is a problem. I think it's a not to be underestimated problem about trying to gain wider international support for what, uh, what, what may be the, the, the principled way forward on this matter. So wh wh where do we go from here? As I say, there isn't a magic solution because the principal solution is to have a referendum uh, and allow the Kashmiri people to choose. I think, therefore, it simply has to be a, a number of small steps. It, it has to be about at least trying to get some normalization of, re of, of relationships uh, in the area. Um, you know, at least since 2010, India and Pakistan are back talking to each other. Uh, and while that's not going to resolve this problem anytime soon, uh, at least it creates a slightly different climate. So I think that is important, and the international community can do its best to try and support those talks um, and encourage both sides to participate. I, I'd also say, and it is relevant because Pakistan is clearly a key player, it would be very helpful indeed if Pakistan could sort itself out on some of these issues, it could, that it could become a stable democracy in the long term, uh, and it could, um, I'll say this, uh, and probably maybe for one or two reactions, be a little bit less ambivalent about where it stands on terrorism sometimes. Uh, and there are elements of the Pakistani state, sometimes the security service, which sometimes don't appear to be as clear uh, about the view about how you should deal with terrorism in a rigorous way uh, as we might like them to be. Uh, and that does cause concern. Of course, it's concerned to India sometimes, though India's got, you know, the way it deals with people in Kashmir can't be supported in any sense, and that amounts to terrorism, in my view, uh, as well. Uh, but we, we, we have to at least, I think, have a dialogue with, 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 with the Pakistani administration and political parties about that. And finally, I think it is, uh, and Linda was talking about this uh, just at the end, about trying to keep on raising the issue. Because the difficulty is, if this problem is seen to be insolvable, and it may be in the short term, if it is something to be too difficult to deal with and resolve, which it is in the short term, then people give up on it and don't refer to it. And we shouldn't allow that to happen. So that's why it's important, Maruf, that you've got this conference here today. It's why it's important that we continue to raise the issue in Parliament. There's a Kashmiri group there, uh, which I'm a member of, uh, and I know um, Paul Bromfield is a member of uh, and active in uh, as well. That we continue raising the issues uh, that Linda raises them in the European Parliament uh, and we raise them on, on an international scale. Not because that's going to produce an immediate solution, but because if we don't raise it, if we don't keep on referring to the fact that there is an unresolved problem, then the problem will never come on anyone's agenda ever for resolution. And that's only the only comfort I can offer. At least it's, it indicates uh, that there is still a role to play uh, for a conference like this uh, for those involved in politics at all levels to keep on raising the tragedy of the Kashmiri people and the fact eventually we need a resolution for that. Thank you, Clive. Uh, 
uh, we still have some time uh, for question and um, answer session. Uh, so if you, if you have any question from any member of the panel, uh, so please you can raise your hand and if there is a very key, a key in on your microphone just press that one and you can speak it through uh, so if you have any question raise your hand please okay good afternoon i'm zafar Iqbal from azad kashmir i'm doctor by profession and visiting this country i want to bring some few historical aspects to the, this very August meeting, and especially Mr. Lai. Dr. Sab, Dr. Sab, I'm sorry, I'll have to stop you uh, because we have very short time. So the, the session is just to ask questions, don't make no statements or very long questions because we need to allow the panelists to answer the question. Just a yes. quick, brief question, please. My question is that uh, Kashmir problem is uh, most of it uh, is owed to England because in not in 1976, it was in 1876 when British went to India and they abandoned this state to Maharaja Gulab Singh knowingly, but they didn't know the potentials of Kashmir. If you see the Kashmir, Kashmir is the head of the uh, subcontinent. And this head of the subcontinent and similarity with the Britain as it is in its uh, form of the people in the form of the uh, country, in the form of the culture, in the form of everything. Because all its resources, question, all its please. climate was like this. So the problem of Kashmir is mostly in 1846 due to England. It went to Maharaja Hari Singh, to Maharaja Gulab Singh. The British, they sold it to Maharaja Gulab Singh in 1947. When, so I'm sorry, uh, I will have to stop you here just because, just because we have very short time and we'll have to be stick with the... I, 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 have, reached, I, I have reached to my question. Dr. Please, Dr. Please, because so the people, at the audience, hmm. they have parked their cars and they have to leave on time and we have right. to serve the refreshment as well. If you want my to ask a question, please ask in just in one second, please. Yes, Thank you. I, I just stop it and I think that I request to the Britain and the Britain who is... Uh, uh, who is the pivot for the democracy, and you are the leader of the democracy, and all this suffering the, uh, there is only can be stopped by the help and by the sweet thoughts of like uh, Lady Maxine. If this uh, thing is uh, being told to every British citizen, they will definitely side with the Indian, That's and that is Thank only you. my request Thank to you very much. everybody. Thank you for your question. Uh, I will like to, I will take a few more questions. If uh, oh, okay, uh, we have to give. If uh, if I can apologize, uh, David Bo, our member of uh, European Parliament, is here also. He must have been stuck in the traffic somewhere. Uh, I can understand the uh, weather. Uh, David, I can we can give you just five minutes uh, to speak, and then uh, if I if I really request you just to stay with us uh, until 10 past, and then straight from here we'll go to reception room. And uh, if you allow me, so then I can extend the time. If you don't allow me, so then we can, uh, we can uh, finish this program here. So what's, what's your opinion? Ten past, okay, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, David. Uh, without, without any, uh okay, go on, so, so you can, you can introduce. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, David Bow uh, is, is, is a person uh, who uh, has been an ardent uh, supporter of the Kashmir cause, and he visited both parts of Kashmir, that's the, uh, the Azad Kashmir, and as well as the Indian held Kashmir in 2004. Uh, and then uh, the parliament produced at that time, Al Mabruk was the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, who is now also the uh, chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and we're looking forward to get some work done through him. Uh, they produced an ad hoc delegation report. 
And uh, David, uh, David, in fact, named that report in a press conference when they released the report in the European Parliament in Strasbourg, the beautiful prison of the world. So that's how we have known David since then. Thank you very much, David. It's all yours. This is a little bit more technical than needs town hall. First of all, my sincere and deepest apologies. It's taken me over two and a half hours to get here from Leeds, but I'm here. That's the important thing. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. I won't say very much, but I will be happy to answer your questions. I, w I took an interest in Kashmir, largely because of the, 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 in the, the interest that there was in Kashmir in the local Pakistani Kashmiri community when I was a counselor in Middlesbrough. And there are people there I know, I who, who will know friends and people in Middlesbrough, Pakistani Kashmiri community there, who encouraged me to take an interest. I learned a little bit about it. And then finally, when I, was a when, when I was a member of the European Parliament, I had the chance to go to Kashmir, both sides. And that made a very interesting comparison. It took quite a little bit of time to get to, especially to the Indian side of Kashmir, because quite frankly, they were not very comfortable about us going there. Um, wh when I went to Kashmir, um, Azad Kashmir, I saw on one side a country that was split, dis driven by d d the this terrible dispute and with, a, with, with a line of control that was not a real border. Went right up to the line of control, saw the Indian po observation posts on the other side of, of, of the valley that we, w we visited. Ch uh, Chakoti, I think it was, we are. Chakoti. And we were, we, we were, and we were very kindly looked after and, and, and shown around by the, the Pakistani authorities and the Azad Kashmir authorities. I saw refugee camps that had been almost permanent established refugee camps and an economic situation that could be greatly, greatly improved if the country was reunited. There was no doubt about that. And there was just at that time the hope it might be reunited. There was just at that time the hope that the borders would start to come down. The bus was being sent from uh, from Muzaffarabad across to, to, to Srinagar, and we were just hoping that things would start to move. And then a few months later, be just before I left the European Parliament, I went to the Indian side of Kashmir. And I saw something which I thought I'd forgotten about because people who know me know that I'm my, my wife. Uh, I took my wife many times when we were first married to visit her sister in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland during the Troubles when we, the whole of Northern Ireland was an armed camp where there were soldiers on every street corner, where there were patrols and there were, you, you stopped at checkpoints and things like that. And I saw all of that when I was a young man and I took my wife to visit her sister. And I saw it all again 20 and 30 years afterwards when I went to Kashmir, Indian side. Soldiers everywhere, on every street corner. Soldiers because there was a state of insurrection. The, 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 and the army has the, over 700,000 troops in it still today in Kashmir trying to hold on a population of what? 14 million? So, and quite frankly, if the Indian army, if the, uh, the Indian authorities who, when we visited in Delhi and talked to tell you quite frankly that there's peace in Kashmir, it's only because the, uh, the Indian army sits on Kashmir. Sits on Kashmir like an elephant sits on an anthill and squashes everything underneath it. Feels little irritation, but it, it's like an elephant sitting on an anthill. And the situation in Kashmir has not changed. Men are being arrested all the time. The, the Indian Army is, is, is conducting operations all the time. We were not allowed to go up to the line of control on the Indian side. We were give, flown around in a helicopter, but they didn't like us to go much outside of Srinagar. They kept us under, under quite armed guard a lot of the time. And we saw, quite frankly, a, a, a country under siege and divided. We had the opportunity to speak to many people from Huriat Conference, and there was no doubt about it that there, there are different views and different opinions amongst the community, community but they all want one thing, self-determination. And that is the objective that we must, and the principle that we must uphold, self-determination for the people of Kashmir. How we get there, how long it takes, I don't know. It will be up many much, very much in the hands of the, 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 the people there. Let me say this, I saw the situation change in Northern Ireland and it's a much better place. I'm going across in the summer next year for the first time for two or three years. 
take my wife again to see her sister and, 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 her, and her children. And I will have to say that dialogue is the only way. You must start to get people talking. You must start to get people discussing issues. Not at first simple things. The simple things like how do you run a bus service across from, from Muzaffarabad to, to Srinagar? We got there, but we did, didn't, didn't last, I'm afraid. Simple things like how do we ensure families can contact and speak to each other and reach each other after they've been divided by 50 years? They're the kind of things that we need to start to get them talking about. The Indian authorities are reluctant, but the Indian authorities will have to come to the table if we're under international pressure. And there are real things to be discussed. There's still the water issue in Kashmir. Kashmir is a vital area in terms of water supply for India. India must talk to, to, to Pakistan and the, uh, the Azad Kashmir authorities about that. The local community must be involved. There must be some discussions about protection of the wildlife, protect protection of the forests, beautiful, wonderful forests that are being logged, logged out of existence if we, if we, if we, don't, if we, let, we don't do something about it. We start, need to start talking about those things and slowly build towards the realization that Kashmir has always been a unique situation in India, in the Indian subcontinent. Kashmir has never been, uh, um, if you like, uh, a, a, a totally incorporated part of the Indian state. During the Raj, Kashmir was a, a, a semi-independent state. The, the, the British had responsibility for external affairs, but internal affairs, responsibility and duty controlled by the Kashmiris. We need to start to talk how we can go back to a situation like that. We need to start to talk how we can get the, the Kashmiri people to achieve self-determination. And it will only happen if you have dialogue. That's my conclusion, dialogue. I, I now have to say that when, when we were there, we were very concerned about the situation and we did not realize how bad it was of human rights. We were being told different things by different people. The Indian authorities were telling us, oh yes, we have so many hundred men in detention. Oh yes, we have so many hundred men in the prison. Yeah, they are, we, will, we, we have presented them be, we, uh, we, when the writ of habeas corpus has been served in the court. We have presented them. We said, hundreds? Red Cross tells us there are thousands. We have seen many people. We, we met some of the half-widows. Red Cross was, told when, when we met it, said they, were, they had records of many thousands of men being arrested. Where were they? they didn't, the figures just did not add up. Well, we've discovered since where they were, in the ground around some of the army camps, the hidden, these hidden unmarked graves that are now being discovered. The Indian Army has a lot to explain. The Indian Army has a lot to be accountable for. Its actions in Kashmir are not the actions of, a, of an army of a democratic state, of an army under the control of an elected government. Something has got to be done about that. And we have to be sure that, that, that that's what has happened in the past does not continue to happen. So we have to continue to apply pressure. And let's not forget India and, and Pakistan and the, the future of Kashmir is a vitally, str globally strategic issue they are both nuclear powers. They've been in conflict before. We don't want to see that happen again. We need now to start the dialogue that will bring guarantee a peace in future and guarantee human rights and self-determination for the people of Kashmir. I'm sorry to be so late, but please, I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you very much. If you have any more questions, so just in one line, uh, so I will take uh, just a couple of questions. Okay, Mr. Katsop. Yeah, I would like to ask a uh, better question. What's the Labour Party manifesto toward the Kashmir and how should it be resolved? Any more question? Thank you, sir. Uh, a very uh, small remark uh, for Linda. Thank you very much for socialist support within the European Parliament. Of course, Gary Titley did a wonderful job when he was there. And presently, of course, um, uh, Richard Howard is uh, doing a wonderful job as well together uh, with Joe Leinen, although he's German, but he is doing an excellent job. I have a question for Clive Betts as well. 
uh, European Parliament um, has done some work, parliamentary work on Kashmir. They have sent uh, two delegations to Kashmir. They have raised the awareness on Kashmir. They have also done ma uh, urgency resolution on mass graves on Kashmir. Can Clive Betts please tell me what the British Parliament, the Westminster Parliament has done about Kashmir? And how many times over the last five years, EDMs have been introduced in the Westminster Parliament on mass graves, on AFSPA, on NPSA. Thank you. Any more question? If not, I will close that session for questions. I'll ask Clive to answer uh, both these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Let me push the button. Um, the uh, Lib Dem's position, I think, is essentially in support of, of self-determination. Obviously, we haven't got a, a manifesto as such now. We will develop one again for the next election, and that's, I'm sure, what many of us will be pushing for. In terms of the, um, the issue of what's happening in Parliament, well, the, the Parliament works in a, in, with a number of aspects. There's an all-party group on Kashmir, though that's, not, that's recognised as part of the parliamentary process, but it's not part of the... Uh, formal parliamentary consultation, scrutiny, legislative uh, arrangements. Um, that's done by the select committee. I I'm not aware it's done in anything recently on Kashmir. I have to go back and check. And I certainly couldn't tell you uh, how many EDMs are put down. The reality is that EDMs in Parliament are put down all the time. I mean, there are literally thousands of them already in this Parliament. So uh, I, I don't think you should judge um, interest in something necessary by how many EDMs are put down. There is an interest, there is an all-party group, it does meet regularly, and it has discussions about precisely these issues. So, so there is that interest. All-party groups tend to be attended uh, by people who've got an interest in a subject, uh, and, 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 and Parliament MPs and members of the House of Lords are members of groups they've got an interest in. And I say I and Paul Blomfield certainly are members of the, uh, of the Kashmiri group. Uh, just coming back to the point that was made earlier about uh, the, the, the whole problem goes back a lot further. I, I agree with that, and one of, one of the problems is, uh, and you look at the common threads that run between some of the real conflicts of the world, whether they be um, disputes between tribes in Africa, or the problem of Palestine, or the problem of Kashmir, uh, British colonialism is one of the threads running through all of them. Um, and, you know, the, 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 because Britain helped cause some of these problems isn't necessarily mean that Britain's got the solution to them all now. But I, t I totally take the point. There's a, a long history to all these issues, um, and British colonialism is very much a part of that. Thank you, Clive. Uh, here are a few um, thanks and acknowledgements. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, GMB Union, uh, Thompson Slisters, Ilum News, and Kashmir Central London. Without their sponsors, it would have been very difficult for me to organize such a wonderful event. Uh, second, uh, second thanks goes to all speakers. They have come from different parts of the world and different part of the country. Uh, and it would have been very difficult if you was not here, the audience it would have been not a good event. Uh, and also uh, thanks goes to uh, Mohammed Akbar, Amar Ilyas, uh, Nasser Rauf, and um, uh, also the Sister Maryam. I also uh, admire the work of the uh, Ilm News, uh, Mr. Shafkat Saab, uh, Rashid Khan Saab, uh, who will be covering this uh, for the Urdu Press and for the uh, DM Digital. So now, uh, refreshments are, uh, are getting cold. They are cold, but they are getting more cold. So I would uh, uh, like to ask everyone, and once again, I thank you very much for your uh, contribution, your time, and uh, once again, we'll keep uh, fighting for the uh, human rights for the people of that region or any 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 community or any member of the international community they are suffering uh, the abuses and the human rights uh, uh, issues uh, any part of the world uh, so this is our pledge uh, so once again uh, i would like to ask uh, while you're going through uh, to the reception room b uh, for the refreshment if you go through and once again if you haven't watched the uh, see the exhibition in the ante room. So keep watching that one, and uh, uh, we'll see you in the uh, reception room, Mandela room, and have a nice uh, uh, afternoon and safe journey home. Thank you very much.
No, 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 just throw the other card. Too bright. Too bright on screen. Okay, now I'm shy. Yeah, okay. This is okay? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, stop the banner coming down anyway. <laughs> Good job. One, two, three. One, two, go, go. Okay. Right, Mike, uh, we have with you uh, MP Clive Betts uh, with us today. Uh, we've had a, a conference at Sheffield City Council today uh, in regards to the human uh, humanitarian issues in uh, Azad, Jammu, Kashmir. So we'd just like to uh, know a little bit more about this uh, from MP. Um, Clive Betts. Uh, Clive, um, we know you, obviously you, you take local people's voices into the parliament and obviously yes, if, yes. uh, uh, and those voices are then at the international level. Uh, and, and we thank you for turning up to this com conference today. Um, particularly the, the ward that you live in is, 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 uh, has a vast majority of Kashmiris living. Uh, what, what do you do to, to take the voices up, up to the parliament and, and what has so far been done up there? 